Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Giant Slayer TV, TFT Fates, and a regional qualifier. Doa, Crowen, Keen here with you. Two games down, three games to go. And uh, we had some pretty wild differentials in results for the most part uh, between games one and games two. The lobby is wide open as far as uh, who's going to be the top four, who's going to be the bottom four at the end of the day. So I, I feel like we just, I just want to see the games uh, because we don't know who's going to win yet. Yeah, the scores are really, really close after just two games. Unfortunately for players like Nubal and Boomer and Zapper, who are on the bottom, both Soju and Mismatch Socks, while they have a first, they also have a bottom four placement. So it gives Nubal and Boomer and Zapper room to catch up because just a four point gap between first and sixth here, like this is peak TFT competition right now. Yeah, it's yeah. still early. You saw, like Doa mentioned earlier, that. Both Aegon and Sox did well in game one, followed by game two. So everybody, anything could happen. There's still three games left. All eight of these climbed over some really strong competition and some really bad spots themselves to be able to make it this far to begin with. So no strangers to being in a bad spot. I expect all of them to still come out strong here. Yep, very true. And uh, don't forget, you can put yourself in a good spot. If you type exclamation point GSTV in chat, that's right. Make sure you go to Juke, you register, and you have a chance to win up to $300 for free. You can, uh, like I said, exclamation point GSTV is going to be there. It's also a good place to see all the player POVs. Again, if there's a player in particular that you want to watch throughout these games. And uh, you can also type exclamation point scores if you want to keep an eye on that scoreboard throughout the day. So again, big shout out to Juke.gg for being a great sponsor, not just for us here in this tournament, but for just uh, TFT in general. They've been supporting the scene since nearly the very beginning, and uh, they're awesome. So that said, I am ready to get into game number three. Um, I'm really hoping we see some of our players towards the bottom pick it up a little bit. It is tough for players like Boomer and Zapper and Nubal to be in this position where you're in this stacked lobby. There's a big difference, and as both of you can probably attest to, between being on the ladder and running into these players in ladder games up in Challenger to being in a tournament lobby with this much on the line, isn't there? Yeah, tournaments are a different beast, and we heard Aegon talk about that yesterday in the interview. You got to approach tournaments differently uh, than ladder, and with that comes a lot of pressure as well. I'm sure this is uh, you know a couple of these players you know first time competing in something to this scale, so there is a lot of nerves going into a finals day number three. Like you got the first game jitters, maybe the second game jitters, but now you got to just be comfortable, play what you're used to. You know, just don't overthink it. Make the decisions you usually make when you're playing you know on ladder, but apply it to now. You got to really pick it up maybe go for some first or eighth play styles you just got to get fourth to advance into qualifier number two it's not <laughs> like you have to get first place there is you know some money uh, on the line there but just uh gave yeah, a grand advice a 10 minute timeout i think there. Yeah. <laughs> i was about to say <laughs> I thought they on pro play they're less likely to you know read copy pastas do dumb shit uh, <laughs> their chat and but Soju immediately proving us wrong that he is more than happy to tab out and give a nice little timeout to his buddy Grand Vice there in the middle of the tournament so good to see he's still on <laughs> spirits uh, and able to multitask even when everything's on the line. Yeah, so he's just uh, super confident in his uh, ladder results. He's uh, he's too good to join the the tournament crew, apparently. But we'll so we'll see what happens by the end of the set. GV8, all right. G GV8's yeah. the final boss here. You know, it's uh, I guess. whoever wins this, you got to face GV8 and ladder after that. That's the real test. He's the ultimate weapon of uh, of this one. <laughs> GV8 ladder god, though. Perhaps see him in one of these qualifiers in the future as well. But so I hope so. Yeah, no, definitely. I love watching Grandvice play, you know, playing against him for a while and just seeing him play in the ladder. He's a very, very intelligent player. Mm -hmm. um, he's yeah. been uh, pretty active. Uh, he's had the the TFT dailies. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to peek at those where he does a little Yeah, two those are great. Yeah, they've all been really funny. Uh, I want to give a shout out to GBA. So if you have a chance to take a peek at that, he's uh, got great content for TFT and a fantastic player that we will definitely see before the end of the set. Yeah, too cowardly to be in this tournament, but you know, it's, <laughs> he's, fun, he's fun to watch sometimes too, but... Soju finding the early Evelyn, so uh, could be in for a very strong cultist board early here, depending on what he hits. Could even just run a couple Ooh. of shades there, yeah, yeah. with the Evelyn, you only need one more cultist, you know, maybe an Elise or a Pike uh, to get that going on. If I he like hits it. the Elise or the Pike early, just having the early shade like this is uh, feels quite good. Definitely yeah. uh, up on your econ, though, so I could see a situation in which he decides to sell it as well, just to preserve some money here. Okay, he's getting a little bit more money. 
Yeah, got some gold with an item component there, so that's kind of that's kind of nice. You get five gold total. Three of that gold is in the form of an Evelyn, um, but it's still not mm. a bad start for Soju here. Slamming a mm. locket as well, kind of adapting to that uh, mismatch socks and Aegon play style of you know backline lockets, which I think is still really strong. Yeah, locket you love to have on cultist. And wait, wait a second. What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's a Garen three on two one. What? Wait, is that what? What? Uh, All right, what so, universe is this? Ping. Somebody's got pink Kuhn and let them know that that's uh that's one two three four five six seven eight nine Garens there. That's Aegon with a, a Garen three on two one. Are you kidding me? Wait, wait, uh, what chosen? Do we see what chosen that was? Uh. I don't know. It doesn't uh, matter, man. You're just you're just man. using it. Lord <laughs> Garen, I think it's like really, really uh, good. You're yeah, it, 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 it the direction with that. Yeah, you, you might not run it the whole game, but you are not going to be losing fights early with a with a freaking three Garen. <laughs> well, I think if it's a if it's Warlord, you probably do run it for the whole game. But if it's Vanguard, yeah, you'll probably end up selling it at some point. But that's that's yeah. still crazy for early game. I mean, it's that's a, a little bit of a bait to run the Warlords because you, you know Garen's not going to carry you for the whole game. You're going to need to get say like a Katarina three in the end. But um, yeah. there is the possibility there with it being Warlord. I think you're going to yeah. have so much money though from all the rounds you win early that uh, you're going to have a lot more rolls to try to hit that. I think in a lot of cases. Well, I would love to see what he ends up pivoting to with this. If he even holds yeah. in the whole game, I like. I don't know if I've seen anybody really. It's been a while since I've seen somebody sell a three star unit. Like you definitely do do it towards sure. the end of the game, because uh, certainly a three star Garen is still going to be worse than a two star Sejuani by the end of the game in terms yeah. of what it offers to your team. But like you said, this is going to preserve a lot of health for him at this stage in the game. I'm just trying to figure out like mathematically what what happened to. Uh... Give him a Garen three at a two one. He he must have had like every shop must have had like at least two Garens in it. So just that's that's Mort Mort dog coming in strong with a big favor for him right here. Uh, that's it's a Vanguard so Garen. Insane. Yeah, right. oh, Vanguard variant. Okay, so he'll probably end up selling it at some point then. But that's that's still great for the early game. I would yeah. expect him to eventually sell it for sure. But that's still you know that's like you're that's like the level one invade just happened. Garen's coming in the lane with the kills <laughs> has a has yeah. a beautiful board or something. That's uh, that's Garen right here. Oh man, it, that, that's just crazy though. But at what point now is the question? Do you sell that Garen? We see, you know, players like um, uh, who was it who ran Boomer and Zapper ran the chosen uh, Vanguard Wukong earlier, and mm -hmm. you know that's not great. And we, we saw them go eighth with it. But now that you have Garen three here, do you three. sell it at four one? Do you take it into level eight, perhaps even? This is going straight to level eight at least. I would expect this to stay oh, yeah. in the. Well, at least eight. Uh, that could be the earliest he sells it, but I actually believe that with a three Garen, it should allow you to carry all the way up to level nine, even. So mm -hmm. this would be a fast <laughs> nine situation for me. And then that look at this. You go fast nine, you sell the Garen, you play a chosen five cost unit is probably the right pivot here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this this thing is just on top I mean, beast. It, yeah, it got it dropped down to blow half HP there. I believe there is a world where one of these players could get strong enough to beat Aegon in the early game here. Of course, it's super unlikely, but uh, something Aegon might have to worry about just a little, little bit. He just puts like one defensive item that he can put onto like a Sejuani or something later, and he's he's yeah. gold. He's gold. Maybe even a Morellos I'd consider making because uh, yeah. he has a rod right now. Ionic Spark or Morellos, two items that I would consider if I was Aegon. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely the spark. He can definitely get this cloak here. It's a one cost cloak. Yeah. He's um, looking at it. Yeah, he could either either is fine. I'm, I would lean towards the cloak being the better item here. Yeah. Uh, he's still thinking about it. It's he would definitely huh. take it if it was one cost. Yeah, he's assuming with the money instead. Morello's is is pretty great uh early on for this just because it's gonna do uh, I mean, the Morello's effect, obviously, but it's it's also just going to do extra damage and ensure that, that Garen can win. But uh, he's going to put on the Jinx. Okay. Oh, ah, interesting. Hmm. All right, I can right. do that, too. Yeah, he has the opportunity for Tom Kench, too, to play Fortune as well with this Garen 3, but yeah, I did not do that. I think you can Fortune win streak with Garen 3 here. Yeah. So I'd yeah. like to flex this in, but maybe he wants to guarantee. Oh. Okay, yeah. I think this is correct play right now. I agree. I agree. He'll win with the Garen 3, right? Yeah, I was going to say you drop four Vanguard here. Yep. 
Yeah, you don't need it. Garen's a beast unto himself. You don't need a, a bit of an extra armor to uh, help him carry right now. I, I do think I would have liked to see the Morellos on the Garen. Uh, I'm curious to your guys' opinions on that, though. I would agree, but uh, it all depends on what his longer-term plans are. Um, and, and here's the issue, too, is that uh, if you have something like a Galio jump on your very vulnerable back line, you're going to lose. But with Fortune in, it's not that big of a deal. So I, I think by putting the Morellos on the Jinx, he's more flexible with the item than he would be otherwise. And he's saying, well, with Fortune in there anyway, I don't really care if I take a couple losses, I guess. Sure. Yeah, these losses are, like, no matter what, if he loses, it won't be a bad losses, right? So he's yeah. definitely doing solid, and he needs money, uh, which is why he has Fortune in. He just, he's still sitting on basically zero econ just because of hitting the Garen early. So yep. Fortune can fix that for you. Uh, this is definitely a thing I like to do when I get like a two gold opener, for example. Uh, which is definitely a different reason to be poor than this, but when you are low on gold and you can somehow fit in fortune early, it's a good way to kind of fix that econ. Yeah, definitely yeah. agreed there. Going to be repositioning just a little bit here. The Jinx now in the corner, the Tom Gench protecting both sharpshooters there. And, you know, Garen's going to be a good spot in a lot of these fights to just spin and damage multiple targets. Although the Divine Chosen from Soju there is still really strong. Yeah, this feels a lot better though. This is uh, that that was more front to back in terms of fighting than the previous fight. So as long as the Garen is taking more of the damage, he's he's still gonna be able to win the fight as he does there. And this is gonna mm -hmm. pop about five six gold, and that's gonna help him uh, fix some of the econ that he had lost. Yeah. Yep, certainly should. Uh, yeah, being sub ten gold going into Krugs is a little bit rough, but he'll get a bit of that back, like you said, from the uh, fortune buff. That Maybe said, one lost yeah. fortune. Okay, six uh, gold. Oh, six gold. Yeah. yeah, not too bad. So he's fortune already. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a that's a fine play. It's a little awkward. You can start wind streaking. Um, going into this now with the Aatrox hit early is a very strong unit. Just flex in at this point in the game. I wonder if maybe you. I mean, I like Teemo a lot, but I wonder if maybe you put the vein in uh, anyway just for dusk because that helps you guarantee three out. Oh yeah, a and lot. your drinks as well. And your, honestly, it helps like everything here. Uh, yeah. To a extent, so I I'll play the main for sure. Yeah. yeah it's it's interesting. interesting. Another so vein in the shop. So you can still sell. He would have preferred to get defensive items here in this situation. Like if he was able to stack the Garen and Garen has three items, this would be a really strong mid game for him. But because he keeps getting backline items, the Garen's a naked frontline unit. Uh, very strong still, but not going to be able to carry as hard as if he had three items. Yeah, so we see him mm. flex in just to get the dusk in instead. Yeah. Mm. Early Ash as well. Okay. Yeah, Might as well hold on to that for a little while. The early two Thresh is also a pretty big hit here. So yeah. strong opener for him either way. Yeah, we saw the potential. Like I was considering six vanguards, but ended up selling for twenty gold there, and I think that is the correct move. Uh, again, because holding on to this Garen really early and not having even a thresh two, the gold is still a little bit lacking. But doing what he can to recover, I think the fortune payout to get that six gold and then immediately sell it was uh, super value. So Aegon's approaching this game really, really intelligently. Yeah, just yep. the six gold is such a nice hit. Like I probably would have greeted for fortune again and gone back right into jail. And <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Aegon playing it a lot. Uh, I don't know if cleaner, but definitely safer than some of. Yeah, I was a little bit worried with the uh, Pike jumping right on the Jinx, but he got the first cast off before the uh, Pike ult came through. Yeah, yeah Pike, Pike one isn't gonna have enough damage, so that ended up being a good, a little last second flip, flip to the left side for him there. Sure. The ADTF on Q inside there, it had IE and Runan, so perhaps <laughs> another Runan's Talon we'll see in the future. Doesn't have to be Talon, of course, but Q we know does favor that build as well as Soju. True, right. true. So Aegon's very strong now. He has the, uh, again, you need a good backline to go with your good front line. You, of course, have great front line with the three Garen, but now he's got four shooters in, in the back. Uh, it's definitely, uh, probably not going to be something he sticks with, but the four shooters is really, really strong in the mid game here. Yep. Yeah. And this is really kind of the best time to run it, too, where you have like a very strong Vanguard front line. Oh, yeah. In the mid -game. This is one of the best yeah, yeah. mid-game front lines that you can have while running for a sharp. So I yep. think this is, yeah, again, really, really good. Like, you're going to be 6 0 non-Tom in this fight here. That nearly the other Oof. side just isn't able to do anything in this. Oof. Yeah. You get so many good synergies, too. Obviously, Vanguard is nice. But uh, I really love getting to fit Dusk into this when you find the Thresh. He's such a good utility tank in that he puts some shields on people, obviously. But just giving your whole team that 20% spell power helps a lot. Yeah. yeah. 
this board's going to be pretty stable throughout this stage. I don't expect them to switch out too much in terms of what units are coming in and out or what types of units are coming in and out. So this is a pretty stable situation for Aegon. Uh, like I said, the big question mark now is how long does he intend on riding this Garen? I'm trying to remember what uh, what Vanguard Chosen's Garen's stat buff is. I feel like I should know this, but it's uh, it's sleeping my mind at the moment. Do you know? Might be HP. Yeah. Is it HP? I was wondering if it's HP or armor. I think it's HP, right? I don't know if armor is one of the... I believe it's either health, uh, attack damage, or spell power, and then mana reduction. I think we're yeah. looking for Right, right. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. Well, uh, but I believe it's just health. Even better for a Garen 3. <laughs> yeah. It's like so that much, much beefier. But, oh, it's going to be struggling into this one, though. Yeah, actually, yeah, looks that's like... spin, though. As soon as he pops the ultimate, he's going to just live that much longer. He can't. So the problem with... Uh, the comp and trying to beat this is even if you kill a Garen, there's also a Thresh that is very difficult to kill. So right, yeah. uh, if you can't if you can't get on the back line to eliminate the damage, then you're probably going to lose fights to a gun. You just won't have stronger front line than him when it comes to front to back fighting styles like that. No, definitely not. The Jinx was alive the whole time, and you know Jinx basically uh, dealt was it four thousand or so damage there. The Rage Blade Marlowe's even just this the the spare sword on the Jinx as well, just making sure she's going to get that much more damage off over the course of the fight because the frontline is so strong. Yep, definitely. So what's he going to grab? A uh, couple different options here. You could go for well, there's D Claw, there's Shojin's Giant Slayer. I think Shojin's is going to be the play because he's already using the Jinx anyway. I think Shojin's Maybe. awkward if he. I don't think know if he wants to commit to this. It's definitely the yeah. best item he can slam into the slot there. Like, you can put child. it on a Morgana later, I guess. But we'll check back in with him later, uh, trying to see what mismatch socks is up to this time. He's got Cultist in with the uh, Cultist Chosen Twisted Fate. Socks was actually the one that beat Aegon, I believe, in the last stage, and I believe it happened on this exact round. So there's a pretty good chance that he fights Aegon, and you see him actually pan over to Aegon right over there, expecting the same thing. Mm, could so, be. Yeah, if you get good at reading what fights are coming, uh, this this would be a pretty high likelihood fight here. Mm, uh, he hits really Nontom's dead. He yeah. managed to touch Nontom. Nontom is trying to cash out on Fortune here. He went up to seven. So I, I'm curious how long he's been in the Fortune GL for. But it looks like Sax was also wrong. You saw him panel Raygon and ends up getting wrong somebody else. So he's probably happy to avoid that fight. It was definitely a rough one. Wasn't going to be a confirmed win for him. But this one feels much better. Yeah. yeah definitely. Oh, this one's definitely feeling like here, though. Well, yeah, I was going to say it feels like a win, but. Oh, uh, the GA as well. Oh. I the ZZ rat. Uh, still has GA in the Nidalee. Yeah. Not Nidalee's going to spear again. Nope. Yeah. Oh, is that that oh, is so telling there. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a rough one. Mm, Sox is sad. You definitely don't want to lose that fight there. Uh -oh. Yeah, for sure. I usually don't lose that fight either, but oh man. Fight RNG. It is a little bit surprising. Um, you know, when it comes down to it, I think, unfortunately, a lot of cases, unless you're running Mage, Twisted Fate is just not going to be a big damage dealer unless yeah. he's casting twice or Twisted gets, like, perfect cards. Twisted Fate also, like you said, the in terms of perfect cards in that, is also one of the units that's notorious for just kind of inting the fight by throwing the cards in the middle of nowhere. Yep. Yeah, I think backline Twisted Fate is especially prone to throwing kind of wild uh, cards. The traditional TF positioning is that sort of, like, upper right positioning in the second row, you know? Because he has a better chance of, like, covering the the board from uh, right to left. Just a little better angle for sure. Yeah. More dangerous right now in the meta, but if you could put him anywhere you wanted, that'd probably be where most people would prefer to have TF just with the way his ability works. No, Sox yeah. is happy with that loss there. It's a good loss. It lets him chain the loss going into the neutral round here. And yeah. he could consider selling this, or he's gonna, he's probably most likely going to roll and find one more cultist, and that'll let him sit at six cultists throughout this stage. I've never seen Sax go towards nine cultists, so I'd be surprised if he ended up committing to that angle. But definitely holding six cultists throughout stage four is the play. Yeah. Yep, definitely. for sure. Like, All right, let's see what the yeah. wolves bring him. Yeah, his gold is like okay. It's not exceptional though. Um, kind of, I suppose, average at this point. The items are going to be cloak bow there, and has another bow uh, and belt on the bench. Mm. That's a lot of bows. Yeah, yeah. I well, love Runin's, which is Runin's ZZ rot, like uh, Zeke's maybe. 
Yeah, he's rolling right now without selling the uh, the the cultist TF chosen. So definitely wants to find the six cultist for this mid game. He found yeah. a lot of hunters there though, so might end up just sitting at the three. It's unlucky because he was looking for literally just one more cultist, and he didn't see a single one on that roll down there. Yeah, but he's still in a pretty strong comp. Oh, okay. He takes out the Garen right now. Sees rat probably just gonna go on uh, Jarvan or Wukong. Yeah, Wukong, because you can just swap it over to anyone else after that. Aegon though, still sitting pretty over here, ninety six HP. Wow. Yeah, Aegon's, at, Aegon. Aegon's at the thirty gold. So you saw him roll a little bit here with the three Garen. Uh, wasn't comfortable sitting with that being his only front line, but that's gonna be enough to beat Sax, who I think didn't have the best roll down in that situation. He also still hasn't committed to his items. Uh, I mentioned this a few times we were watching Sax. Not the highest. APM player, so he doesn't like to put himself in positions where he has to make like super hard pivots on the fly. Mm -hmm. So definitely, he's always the type to take another extra turn to kind of look at the situation and figure it out. So he'll slam the items here for sure. Okay, RFC on the Ash there doesn't want to make another ZZ rot. A BT could go on the Ash later on, doesn't want to commit it quite yet though, but maybe. Yeah, probably on the back line. This, he, he, he's a big fan of Zeke's Herald, but he might just make BT on the Ash. Yep, and uh, the Elise gets a uh, ZZ Rot, makes, uh, makes a lot of sense. So interesting Ash itemization, RFC, BT. BT is very good into this meta at the moment. Uh, I think it's really strong into Galio. The Ash can sometimes heal through, the, uh, at least the Galio 6 for sure. The Galio 9 will still kill it, but uh, 6 Cultists, the Bloodthirster Ash could be a big difference there. As, of course, if it's Ash 1, it's not going to make the big, a big deal, but Ash 2 for right. sure is having Bloodthirster. Yeah, it was still holding on to the Chosen, though, so we can't find any Chosen Ash or anything of the like. It's only sitting on the one. It doesn't even have a pair yet, but 30 gold, not the worst. Sox's HP is still fine. It's at 64. He can go to 5-1 and probably just roll down at that point. True. Yeah, that's a little awkward, but his board isn't super weak or anything, so I think he's fine sitting to stage 5. He, he could lose all 5 fights on this stage um, and go down to about 40 health, but that's not the worst case scenario, uh, especially considering how bad the 4-1 roll was for him. To be able to still have 30 gold here, I think you're feeling pretty decent. Oh yeah, Nubal with the chosen Elderwood Ash on the other side there. Hand of Justice and a bow. So uh... he's Ashes now, he's just countered. This is the second two-star one he's seen. So he now knows that there are very few Ashes left in the pool with, again, 12 total for four-cost units, which leaves, I believe, if there's seven we've seen. There might be a couple other gone at most. There's four or five Ashes left in the pool here. Yeah, yeah it'd be yeah. hard to play Hunter from here on out. Yeah, have to kind of high roll, get lucky on that roll down to actually do it. There are other options that Sox could pivot into. I mean, Sox is very much just a play what you hit. It just depends on what he hits at that point, because looking at this comp here, it's a little bit of everything. Yeah. And yeah, he's taking some... That was a big loss. That was not... He can't afford these, like, 10, 10 damage, 12 damage losses, so he needs to be able to kill a few more units. Okay, I was wondering if we were going to see this. Um, maybe the swap uh, over... To, uh, you know, I, I guess he could use that Talon, but we'll see. Yeah. I mean, there's less Talon, so he's looking around saying, okay, maybe there's one Talons. Yeah, there's another Chosen Ash. There's it's only a one Ash, but there's well. actually four other Ashes gone on the board. So he can definitely still commit to this. There's only uh, five Ashes gone at the moment, so he's probably... One of those yeah. Ashes looked like it wanted to be a Talon, though. Just <laughs> yeah. looking at the rest of that board and looking at the items on that uh, on the Ash. We're yeah. going to take a look at non Tom's board for now. We'll check back in with Socks a little bit later. He's going for the uh, the classic enlightened build. Great items on the talent. Yeah, great items. And talent. Great yeah. items on everything, actually. Yeah. He's wow. got really phenomenal items. This is definitely a situation where he's win streaking. He has good health. He has good econ. This is one where you again you're you're in a spot where you could win the game if you are able to play it out right and you don't run into any super bad luck. Uh, yeah. Actually, he's at nineteen. Oh, he's level eight though. Yeah, he's got fantastic econ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll be able to get 20 here. Even if you lose this round, probably selling a Janna pair isn't the worst. Might want to keep on to it, though. Yeah, uh, either way. One Ari here, though. Yeah, probably yeah, not. This talent's going to be too good. This talent basically could 1v9 this entire team here. Pretty much. He's got that uh, Fortune Sejuani as well, which, like, Sejuani 2 is just going to be plain old strong, you know? Yeah. But it's also something that late game, if he manages to get up to level 9, which looks pretty likely... He could sell it and look for like a, a five cost chosen. Yeah, it looks like he's planning on riding the sedge for sure. And then you, know, you sell yeah. and you're looking for, you know, you get lucky, you hit a Yone chosen, you hit a Lee Sin chosen, anything of that nature. Right. Ooh, he's in good shape either way. 
Oh, yeah, plays the Katarina instead of the Pike, and you're able to get Fortune with that as well. Uh, but no. Yeah, didn't want to do it, though. <laughs> Pike's just so much better than the Katarina. Like, I, yeah. I, I think that win streak. That's the type of play you make in solo queue. It's like, ooh, yeah, let's get some <laughs> gold going here. But I think in tournament play, you want to go for the more safe option. And especially yeah. coming off that last game, I think he's feeling a little... Uh, I don't know if tilt's the right word, but definitely a little disappointed in how it ended. So he definitely wants this game to be a little stronger. Probably. Look at this chosen pike. That's a lot of items, and he's going to pretty much instant cast. Is it going to be strong enough, though? It's actually possible. Yeah. It's tough. Uh, uh, a little bit low. GA popped. All right. Another Sejuani ult. Maybe if the Sej has like zero health. Wow. I can't believe that ult happened. It didn't end up. Oh, it did end up mattering a lot. That popped the GA. Consensual? Can this? Does he oh, win this? Wow. All right, that said, Joel was clutch. <laughs> yeah, it's so close in that fight, actually. So yeah, there's more. It's a huge spike. That's ah, big. Yeah, that's a strong Morgana. Okay, like, sell oh. right now. So he's planning on rolling right now, um, which mm. I don't think is a bad play either. Uh, rolling at fifty and trying to find a different chosen. Um, because he he might have thought, oh, okay, I'm not strong enough to go nine. I actually don't think that's the wrong read. Um, it, a lot right. of under units on this board even if you kept that sedge so i think rolling here and maybe hitting a chosen casio a chosen shen any of those things could be a much stronger option even on a second talon right uh okay interesting uh item options he uh total components so he must have played fortune at some point in this game and collected something right yeah either that or can you actually high roll this many components without rolling fortune i know you can get a couple more but can you get three more I've I've seen fourteen naturally. I don't know if I've ever seen fifteen, which makes me think he yeah. must be a little lucky. Definitely seen fourteen. As wow. offered another situation. Ooh, Dusk chose oh. the Riddle. Really that's cool. interesting. I mean, that's a nice standalone buff for his team. Yeah, but I, I some people would definitely quit playing this. And yeah, yeah, not yeah. I think this is the correct move. Yeah. Play this in nine, I think for sure. He can he put can... like I was gonna say he can put like a trap claw on it. Oh yeah, I like that. He was That's definitely nice. considering what he really wanted was you see the two extra talents there. He's like, oh, maybe I can hit chosen talent and then yeah. one off from talent three. That's a guaranteed win. But this is definitely the better play. I would also sell the other two talents at this point because you've already picked up the chosen mm -hmm. ribbon. Then try and go nine, but he might be committing to going for ribbon three. I know hey. there was one other ribbon player. You never know. You never know if you're going to natural those talents, right? I think it's. Yeah. Pretty Greedy, but <laughs> it, it is super greedy. In that scenario, I definitely want to to sell the talons there because the reason that you buy the Riven is to be able to have gold save up to go to nine at that point and then roll down for just improving your comp that way. But mm -hmm. to greed it out, sell the Riven and then try to roll for a specific talent chosen when, you, when you're at level nine, like it can work out. But and again, it is greedy. Moving on to Aegon, Aegon is on five two, still has this Garen right now and is playing Ari once again. I was wondering if we were just going to simply see him uh, go for Vanguard Mystic and just play uh, play Ari. Yeah, I mean, his Ari items are scuffed once again, unfortunately. So maybe he can get lucky. They're definitely better than GA. Because he has the GA, yeah. But He's uh, going to he... be casting a lot between the Zeeks and the Ginsus. So yeah. I don't mind that. It's buffed with the uh, Chalice. So it's, it's to... weird, but it works. You know? Yeah, Death Cap or a Jeweled Gauntlet, it'll feel really good uh, off the carousel here. But it's unlikely he'll get something back. Got Low. stunned right at the beginning of the Ari channel, so he let off kind of a, a little bit of a wimpy ult there, but looks like he'll still probably win. Well, okay, there we go. Yeah. Z on the three Garen's nice too. You get the extra 750 health because it's three starred. Yep. So uh, definitely stronger position than last game, and he was playing a very similar comp, just has a slightly better items, slightly better units, and oh. had a better early game to kind of let him stabilize better here. Mismatch Socks actually goes eighth for the first time this tournament right now. One of the only oh wow, you're right. Off forward as well, but yeah, the first eighth there huh. not a good start to the. I mean, had a good start to the day, but then games two and three here have been very very underwhelming. And he was that, playing hunters, but had that situation where uh, he was trying to play an ash when a lot of other people's people had already hit it, and I think that might have been sort of the the death blow for that uh, that game. His four one roll down was just way too bad. Like this yeah. really you can do because like i was saying he he ended up keeping the twisted fate chosen that was cultist because he wanted to find one more cultist and then on the roll down he just didn't find the cultist i think and that's the true that's really unfortunate if you were going to move to hunter you should have sold the tf but he obviously wasn't trying to do that it just happened to be what he hit mm -hmm. so really unlucky roll downs for him 
could have been a situation in which it might have been better for him to be less quote unquote flexible and a little more rigid with what he wanted. He could have said, Hey, you know, I really need to find this cultist. I'm not going to run these hunters. I'm just going to roll again next turn, sell these hunters off and try and hit this cultist. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. With the playstyle like Sox, maybe sometimes you're a little bit too flexible. You go into your own playstyle a bit too heavily there, but you should right. be willing to, you know, experiment, not experiment, but to go down the road of other playstyles there, um, especially in that in that situation. You just got caught in the middle, right? Where you have that Twisted Fate chosen, which you don't want unless you're going cultist. So if you choose... Oh, I love this. Oh, I was hoping for the second ZZ Rod on Garen 3. That would have been, uh, pre been pretty troll. Yeah. <laughs> He just needed to commit to Cultus if he doesn't sell a TF there. I think that was probably a mistake. You got the war mogs in the end. Yeah. Okay. Gives the Johnny some size up a little bit. Yeah. yeah maybe chicken ulti twice instead of once in, in some fights this time. But it's interesting. We, we see two RE players in this game. Boomer and Zapper also playing the RE, but is level seven and on zero gold there. So <laughs> we'll probably fall because they're 12 HP uh, here soon. <laughs> Blasted though, you see two people with Giant Slayer, and then there's a Morello as well. All three yeah. of those are very good at cutting through health, so uh, it's gonna be a little awkward. But against everybody else, the Warmog is gonna feel quite good, right? And the nice thing is that even if you can go through that health quickly with like the three star ZZ Round minion popping out after the three star Garen drops, like that's still a lot of HP, even for that kind of thing to go through. Yep. Actually, so. Nami was kind of the unsung hero of this fight in, in some regard. You don't usually think yeah. of Nami without Ludens in, in this part of the game being really good, but uh, okay, Ooh. ends up not actually making the difference there. The Talon did survive, but CC the Talon for a while there. I think if Aegon's board was uh, a bit stronger, that, that kind of would have been a win there. I mean, yeah. we've talked about it before. Nantam's items between his Morgana and his Talon are so yeah. good this game. They're, they're pretty yeah. much perfect. Aegon's items are scuffed too. If the items were better, it would have gone the other way as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not times just a little too high roll in this game, uh, to, but it's still a really good fight for Aegon. You're not that mad about that loss against the number one player in the lobby. True enough. Well, let's see what he can put together now. Where we still have a pretty close lobby going into uh, five six here. Boomer and Zapper on the verge of being eliminated. Q and obviously oh, sweating a little bit here, but with the Zephyr, yeah, I guess it's a front of the army there. Yeah. Zephyr the opposite side of Sejuani and then the Zephyron to the Ari. This is a really good, good fight. He's also got a two. Is that a two Yone or one Yone? Uh, one Yone. Just one, but it's really great items on the Yone. Yep. Elderwood is going to make it last a lot longer for sure. Ooh, yeah. All through the fight, even. Yeah. Still a solid fight. Aegon's not too sad about that. Yeah, so Aegon's going to go to nine here. I would expect him to sell the Garen at that point. Um, but he might end up keeping it because the three Garen has a ZZ rat on it, which is pretty strong. So uh, I would be curious. I think the right play would be to sell it, if, but his is kind of awkward. So it can really, I think it kind of depends. So what's going to happen here is he'll probably sit one round. And if he wins this first round, he's probably going to be comfortable saying, okay, I won this round, I sell 48 health. I'm guaranteed at least three fights. So I'm going to take the next two fights and then I will level after the carousel. And if he does that, he'll actually have gold to roll at level nine. Um, otherwise, I think selling the Garen might be a little awkward. Yeah, Aegon does like to run the the Vanguard Mystic variant though of of this Ari comp. I think Aegon was one of the first people to actually do that. But on the opposite side, Aegon also likes the playstyle sometimes where he just goes to nine and greets all those legendaries and puts those. And uh, sometimes you know we see Aegon winning lobbies with Nico still on the bench here. So I yeah. wonder. I, I could see I could see Aegon doing both decisions there. And I think. Maybe... I think yeah. it really just comes down to whether he wins this specific fight or not. And like you see, he's got what another six or seventeen gold uh, of access. So that's another sixteen he can put into levels, which would let him next turn be uh, he can roll to nine and have twenty gold left over. Yeah. And twenty gold's a little awkward um, to be able to sell the Garen and then find something. But if he waits till after the carousel, he'd have forty gold to roll, which at that point you were definitely selling the Garen. Yeah, that Garen is is uh, definitely starting to drop off a little bit, despite yeah. being so strong all game long. Just really not doing anything. Just not much anymore. This is a really good loss. I actually expect him to say, "Hey, I'm gonna." I think he actually win. Yeah. No, close. Uh, Maybe uh, with right one more. Here. Oh wow, the auto attack finish. <laughs> I, I would... that Ginsu's attack speed on the Ari. <laughs> okay. yeah. I, 
roll. Okay, so he's not going to sell the Garen then. You saw him roll there without selling the Garen, so he's yeah. just committing to it for the full course of the game. I would have liked to see him personally beat out a couple more turns with the health he had because uh, so. he's not really going to beat Nantam if he doesn't go 9 and roll for a Legendary Chosen instead, but maybe this will end up being enough anyway. Oh, man. So, cutting cutting is hard. In there to get the Zillion to an awkward decision to have to make, but I guess you get the Garen for your 8th unit to fit the 2 Vanguard in. Uh, 6 Cultists right now. I mean, Zillion 2 is literally yeah. that important. He's oh, he's yeah. that good that you'd make that decision. But yeah. Sure. Yeah. I think Zephyr that decision, though, yeah, it wasn't able to scout against the Zephyr. Kiyun getting a good Zephyr once again. That's, mm -hmm. That could be the difference. Uh, Kiyun actually had time to go look around. Uh, Kiting took a little too long, didn't have a chance to scout for the Zephyrs, and that ended up... Uh, it looks like it's actually... It might not have made a difference either way, but definitely did not help. No. Nope. Keen gonna scrape in a top four, it looks oh. like here. Boomerang Zapper and Kiting go down. Soju actually fell in seventh just a bit ago, too. Maybe yep, we got uh, the top four now. Nantam at uh, number one oh. in the lobby at the moment. Talon three, let's go. Without the chosen, even. Okay, so it looks like we were wrong, or I was wrong in terms of saying I should just sell this. <laughs> yeah, uh, me sold too. It. I I'm not saying you were wrong. I'm just saying it worked out this time. <laughs> the, the optimism prevailed over perhaps the objectively, quote-unquote, better decision, you know? Well, I think one of the reasons he kept it was nobody else in this lobby is actually playing Talon. So yeah. maybe, uh, ended up, maybe this was always the right play, but... It's a calculated risk. Knowing that no one's running yeah. Talon, you are incentivized to, to keep those and end up being rewarded. Of course, you know, could have gone the other way as well. However, but uh, I'm playing it. Well, yeah. able to go nine as well, which means he basically hit it naturally. Um, yeah. There's definitely a lot of luck involved mm. in this. On Tom, Kyun blasted down a negative twenty there. He got rocked, and so that means Kyun out in fourth, and it's going to be Newball, Egon, and Non Tom as our top three. Uh, Newball, Newball has been uh, looking for a big game all day long, and it looks like he's finally going to hit it. For sure, good. Uh, top three at least. Another interesting little stat here is that Kiyun is now the only player today to top four every single game has gone third and fourth and fourth. So some consistency hmm. there with Kiyun. Not the first or eighth play style we usually see him have. Hey, I mean, the best way to be top four at the end of the day is to be top four every game. So yeah, <laughs> he's on track. Oh, wow. uh, I'm intriguing. A yeah. Mm. Well, actually, if you've chosen Morgana, nobody else is running it. I like this play here for the four mystic. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. It's, kind of really the RA. it's such good crowd control uh, early on as well. Yeah, in a fight. Super, yeah. super. Ch Chosen cast is really good. It, is, it just casts so much quicker. Yeah, yeah you. Yeah. Get, you get a real thick ult here. Looks oh, he didn't actually move the Cassio to the side of the RA there, but still has the Yone over there too. This is a really good jump. Uh, really good positioning from Aegon. Uh, the talent gets stuck on the Garen now. Yeah. Ooh, nice castle. Uh, all right. Is this so actually a for non Tom here? Potentially. Eh. Well, Morgana. Right. Still, like I said, the different the problem is even when Talon gets stuck, as long as you have a good Morgana, Morgana can do a lot of work, and that's still going to be the difference here. Yeah. Yeah. It's closer than I would have expected, honestly. But yeah, non Tom's still going to win this fight. Sedge good. Uh, the Sedge. Good crowd control chain too from the Cassiopeia into the Sejuani just how that'll line up when you have that sort of order. I mean, it was a perfect fight in terms of what Aegon needed to do for positioning, and he still lost that. So that's definitely, you're sitting in a position like, well, because uh, mm -hmm. now he's likely to face Nubal, or New, or he's likely to face Nantam or Nantam's ghost, one or the other. And if he takes a similar loss there, that could be it for him. Could be, yeah. Hey, the Garen 3, you know, it's when you hit it like that, when you hit a Garen 3 at 2-1, you're like, hey, Top four. What more can you ask for, right? And uh, top three, even better. So I don't think Aegon's going to be uh, too disappointed no matter what the result of this is going to be. The Lilia sleep comes through there from Aegon, but I mean, this talent three is still just a, a beast. This way, yeah. this talent stuck for so long, though. But yeah. Well, the Yone CC has been uh, pretty huge as well to just give talent time to bounce around safely. Oh, is it a double kill? It, yeah. It's... Uh, no. No. Oh. Not they got quite. not so. quite almost, yeah. yeah there's not... no way. like so. Aegon needs to sell the Garen here, I think, if he really wants to win this. I don't feel like the three Garens and doing like you need to find a chosen five cost if you really want a shot at this one. I feel like, 
not even 10 gold right now though so even if you know, you get the bit of gold from this neutral round and then you sell the garen a garen is nine golds but you have like maybe you know 20 25 ish gold to roll with um might not be enough i just, I just think you need a, a little bit of a prayer play here because it's 64 health from yeah. nine you need to do something for sure um, I, I just don't feel like the garen is gonna be it here i think your your big shot is like hey i'm gonna sell this garen and maybe i hit chosen ari mm. and find more <laughs> Meanwhile, not some finding a Nico there could uh, make a Shen two perhaps. What else? Oh, Yone two actually is still missing it. Yeah, both of those would be good. Maybe you can natural the Shen or the Yone. We'll see. Zillion always a good pickup. Yeah, super, super. always want to find a way to fit that in somehow. Zillion's very good against Ari as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, naturals the Shen two, so you're gonna feel good about that. He's just so, looking for you know. Oh, he's gonna just make this and cut the Lux. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, you don't really need divine at this point. This is just a good. Uh, it's a good, better yeah. dazzler, basically. Yeah, Ezreal's a much, much, much better unit. Yeah. This is a play. Yep. Aegon uh, definitely in a lot of trouble here. We'll see if he can maybe find a way to pull out a win, but it's looking good for non Tom. Yeah, what like the Garen? Find out a little bit though, just to dodge the Ari. But uh, I don't think it'll end up mattering. I feel like uh, you take sort of an honorable vow if you hit a three star at like two one in the game, where it's like, all right. I must finish the game with it. Otherwise, <laughs> it is disrespect to my opponents. And Aegon does just that, but it is Nantam who wins lobby number three here. Or is it Great. lobby number four? I can't even remember. It's been a long day. Uh, we're at three, I believe. Yeah, yeah. we're at three. Yep. Either two, way. Two straight strong finishes for Nantam. Either. He's got to be feeling happy. You know, bounce mm. back after, I think, making some mistakes in game two with a really, really strong performance to take game three. So either way, very strong opener for him. That should put him pretty clearly at the top of the leaderboard. Yeah, yeah, that's I, right. Might actually be tied with Aegon, I believe. And just, you know, looking at these scores on my other monitor, we'll get them uh, for you all here shortly. But yeah, I think if my math is correct, Aegon and Antom should be tied at 20 points with uh, Kyun at 19. We'll find out. We'll take a look at those scores in a moment. We'll take a look at that first place comp as well from uh, match number three. But I think one of the big stories out of that game in particular, too, we mentioned it uh, a bit earlier, was Noob Owl getting a top four finish, uh, top three finish, I believe. Yeah. And so after two bottom two finishes, I think it was in his first couple of games, it was not great. Uh, he really needed a big result too. And, and so this lobby continues to kind of fluctuate. Mismatched socks looking so good at the beginning of the day, now taking an eighth. We'll take a look at the scores here to see where everything's at right now because uh, I think it's still going to look wide open as far as who's going to be that top four at the end of the day. And man, that is tight. Look at that. Only eight points separate number one and number seven in the lobby. It's really just Boomer and Zapper, unfortunately for him, way down at the bottom at only five points. But even Nubal, with that third place finish, jumps up to uh, 12 points. Pretty yeah. tight. Nubal definitely within striking distance now, and it is such a close, close lobby. Uh, you know, as a, yeah, that's correct, Aegon, Nantam tied at 20 points, Kiyun just one point behind, and Kiting just three points behind. This is so competitive, and there is only two games left for all these players to try to get into that top four spot. Yep, for sure. Looking at this, the new battle now in striking range, he just needs 17. Uh, the only few points behind Kiting now. It's definitely still a hill to climb, but new battle is going in the right direction. Uh, Boomer and Zapper has got to start picking it up here. He's got Boomer and Zapper's kind of put himself in a situation where he needs basically a first and a second or a first and a first to really mm -hmm. put himself in the conversation. So uh, a yeah. really rough spot to be in, but time is now. You got to start booming and zapping, baby. <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, even if he does get, like, two firsts in a row, his maximum point total is 25. And if you look at multiple players already near 20 or at 20 at the moment, seems yeah. like it's going to be rough. Either way, you can always play for pride. But let's take a look at the winning comp from last game. This one was from uh, Nantam, maybe redeeming himself a little bit for the uh, previous game where he maybe faltered slightly in the late game. Not so this time around. But, hey, when you get items like that or Morgana and Talon, it, it makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, it definitely does. This is like pretty near perfect that you can have, even giving some uh, Yone some good items as well there with that QSS and that Trap Claw as well. Yone, a great unit to fit in this comp in the end game. Even getting the Ezreal 2 at the end, replacing it for the Lux, uh, just kind of you know sealed the deal there. It wasn't even needed. <laughs> the Talon 3 kind of sealed the deal, but just some icing on the cake there with that Ezreal. Yeah, this this board looks like one of those, you go look up TFT guides, how to play Talon. This would be... <laughs> that would pop up with all the items as well in terms of, hey, this is what you need to do in order to win the game if you're trying to play Talon. This is pretty much picture perfect when it comes to what you're hoping for. This is every Talon player's dream, and to be able to get this type of role in a tournament, it's got to feel great.
Yeah, it's a bit having... too perfect almost, though, because, you know, you're not going to be able to repeat the same kind of comp, the same board, perhaps, you know, twice and even a whole tournament. So Nantom gets that game, um, you know, improvement from a uh, little bit misplaced in the game before, but Nantom has been keeping it up. So we'll see if they're able to do it with uh, perhaps not as much of a quote unquote high roll. That's yeah. right. Well, we are time or uh, we're ready already rather to get into game number four here at the uh, Giant Slayer TV, TFT Fates, and a regional qualifier on board with Nantam, our winner of game number three. And uh, it's going to end up with a cloak. So uh, not getting what he wanted early on and just kind of having to settle cloak, certainly one of the one of the rougher items to start with. Yeah, a bit awkward. Defense, Full defensive items start to the carousel. Some players are going to be not happy about that, namely Aegon, who we know does prefer that rod start here. But... Uh, still could have some options with this cloak. Could go Ionic, could go Chalice, things of the like here. Not going to be the worst item. Cloak doesn't feel as doomed as uh, previously in TFT, where it's like, okay, Cloak is objectively <laughs> the worst start here. It's still like right. not great, but it's not quite as bad as then. I remember there was one tournament, I think Milk got yeah, about two cloaks. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like a four cloak opener, right? After the second PVE round at the Krugs, so... <laughs> I think that was the most unfortunate I saw. So I think that was one of the situations that made Mortdog sit down and say, maybe I should make Cloak a little better. <laughs> it's a, definitely a little well chalice. It's a great item to slam early. You're not always, you're not that mad about Runans. Um, the double the double cloak's pretty bad, but uh, I I personally think he uh, you know he has it common. Yeah, deserved to be punished a little bit after that high roll wow. there. That's harsh. <laughs> Let's it do is. That. Let's see what he's able to do from a low roll item. That spot. is a that is such a it's a such a salty ladder player attitude to have where it's like yeah he's due for a bad game. This guy's coming up sitting here. I'm like <laughs> seeing somebody else high roll that that high. I'm like dang, you know you, right. you don't deserve all that luck. How dare you? Getting a lot of gold here, so actually the luck isn't going to be too terrible. Uh, could have sold to go 10 gold here, but it does choose to uh, make the Wukong pair and just uh, carry some other pairs as well with the Elises and the Maokas. So already a lot of gold there to kind of offset the unfortunate cloaks. Yeah, you would pre-level here probably. Uh, he's only at just in case. Like, say he hits another 3, 4 gold. That might be enough to push him to 10. What is that? Uh, 3, 6, 8 total. So if he gets 2 gold here, you might see him sell everything. Oh, yeah. Perhaps. Yeah, that's 2 gold right there. There's the option. It okay. loses, loses the Elise pair, though, but is going to do it. Yeah, I think this is the right decision. Get uh, yeah. getting the interest rolling on one four is gonna feel good, even if you don't really have uh, ideal items to say the yeah. least. I mean, you need one of three things to happen in this scenario because you have double cloak. You need to have, either have like an econ lead or just have a strong board lead with um, hitting your pairs, but not Tom choosing the econ there. And I think that is a good decision. Yeah, yeah. You should just sit like this. I don't think you slam the dragon's claw either. I think you have to go. You're gonna lose a couple fights, and you try and grab a tier off the carousel to make a chalice. I think that's really. He's thinking Ooh. about it. Oh, huh. all right. Mm -hmm. He's so really focusing on preserving HP, which, you know, arguably is is definitely not a bad way to play right now. But I, I would kind of lean the direction you were talking about as well, where you wait and see if you can maybe grab a chalice. But, yeah. you know, I mean, nothing wrong with trying to preserve some HP. That's for sure. I slam the claw if I have a third item, because then I will just chase and make the good item right there. But because he only had two cloaks, now whatever he, item he picks up, the carousel is going to be a hanging item. And that means True. you're not going to slam anything strong. And so your only complete item is a dragon's claw, which doesn't feel very good for me in, in the early game. So this is definitely a rough start. Uh, I'm not sure I would have made the same play here, but uh, dragon's claw is an item you definitely like having in the end game. So if he's able yeah. to hit some good units, maybe he can get there and still be fine. So I mean, it just doesn't work as well yeah. early game because a lot of the damage is going to be coming in from auto attacks in most of these early fights. And so that claw just is not going to be soaking up those big, you know, Ari ultimates or something like that like it would be later. Yeah, it's definitely kind of a gamble because you don't even know that it's going to be super valuable in the late game. Of course it will. Yeah. There's going to be people, you know, running uh, probably Dusk or probably running some form of AP there. But as you were talking about early game, it's a little lackluster. It was good enough to win that round. There is now the fortune chosen Tom Kench in the shop. And a lot of players would pick this one up. And I, I think I agree with picking that one up. You seem to find one more fortune now. Hey, if you got bad items, this is how you get good items. If you start yeah. going to in jail and, yeah. and, you, and you just... Pick up those losses, you in jail, you start reading books and while you're there, you start learning things, and then you leave with a bunch of items. That is what he's hoping to do. See, like Crowan said something really scary though. He was he said, All you just need to do is just find one more chosen, <laughs> right? Or one more fortune, rather, right? One hey, more fortune, I'm, right? I'm and that's that's hitting today, so why not do it again, right? 
how so many games though do you find the fortune chosen and then you never hit it because it is legitimately harder early game because you're relying on two costs right if you've already got the tom kenshin so you're relying on like at least an annie or an early three cost like katarina or a jinx or something so it can be weirdly hard to get fortune online with a fortune tom kench He's feeling it. You know all those games where you see like Steph Curry just jack one from the logo. This is this is the heat check. He's trying. He's seeing like how lucky am I today? And <laughs> it. yeah, yeah. Non times able to pre level here, so I'll naturally go to five on the next round, given some better shops. You know that higher percentage chance to roll one of those three cost fortunes, and also can make ten gold while doing it. So. Uh, yep. and, and 100 HP, so it's awkward, the items, but there is definitely a lot of room for this to go uh, very right for Nantom. I mean, I also, the class that was... case scenario here, he finds like an early Jinx or something. He's got Sharpshooter, he's got Fortune, he's got a good front line. Front line, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Jinx would be great. The, the Claw's actually probably been... I, he might have actually lost one or two of those fights without the Claw, so... Hmm. Uh, or, uh, it's been paying off dividends. Yeah, probably can't win this one, though, regardless of the Claw there. Yep, going to be able to avoid a lot of that nidalee damage, but that's a lot of damage coming in from the vein. 92 health. Uh, it's usually good enough for a second pick, uh, unless you're really unlucky. So Ooh. It could yeah. actually be a second pick. Get a fortune unit here, perhaps. No, so I'm still second pick. Is there a yeah. There's a Katarina. Good yeah. item. Yeah. If you're going to have a hand of the glove. Oh, not Ooh. bad. Sox is eyeing it, though. Oh, Sox no. The grief. Oh, oh. Oh, uh, didn't take it anyway, though. Hmm. All right. I'm so, really did not take it. No. Me too. Because uh, you're gonna have a hanging item either way, and why would you want the like? The, to me, the difference between a rod and a point is pretty minimal. So I would have liked to see him take the cat to guarantee the fortune because he has a fortune chosen already. It's just, I think, I think you have to take that play there. Yeah. It is surprising. He's like, well, how many do I need for that? Oh, I, I do need three. Oh, well, let's, uh, let's go look at Mismatch Sox's board right now. And he's got the uh, Warlord Chosen Jarvan with the Bramble Vest. So that that is going to be a pretty strong board. So despite yeah. being down at 92 HP as well, um, this seems like a board you can build around well. Yeah, he also picked up the Spatula, which makes me think maybe he's actually considering playing a Warlord here. It's Maybe. possible. It's very interesting for Sox to deliberately take a spatula in a scenario like this. Because, yeah. I mean, you with the Bramble, it's like, okay, the Jarvan could just be an item carrier. It's really, really good for the early mid game. Then pivot into Dusk, go 6 Dusk, put that Bramble on a Riven later on. But the Warlord option is there. Um, I'd be curious to see if Sox does commit to it, though. Yes, I'm one of the few players that I actually saw played uh, Warlord with any sort of consistency at, at the higher levels. And... Uh, so I I don't think he will actually end up committing it to it because I actually just there's like one other guy who was like a one trick warlord and otherwise you really don't see very many warlord players and mm -hmm. at least and we'll see what he ends up doing but with if you're gonna end up playing warlord the most critical item to have is QSS for your Katarina yeah. if you have QSS and you have Katarina I think warlord's actually a very strong composition so I think it'll kind of come down to uh, what kind of items he hits. On the carousel here, but I would expect him to just kind of use this as a transition. You know, getting the hanging spatula there, maybe you can get lucky and make a force of nature, which somebody like Sax would make great use of. Yeah, That's true. Lobby HP is a, you know, we have one kind of uh, exception here, Kuhn. It's only 2 6 going into this round, but he's already at 76 HP. Could even go below 70 before we go Krugs here, but Soju on their side with 100 still, some lobby disparity there. Here's Nod Tom's board again to uh, take a look at the update from that. He's running the uh, the double Teemo now. Well, he yeah. sold the, he sold the Wukong and he still does not have yeah. in. and that that goes back to what we were saying in the carousels. He probably should have taken that Katarina just to guarantee that he has fortune in at this stage. So that's two wasted turns where he doesn't have fortune in, and uh, that could have been he could have started picking up some lost streak or even win and get some gold there. So I think it's a missed opportunity to be running the fortune Tom Kench without having a fortune. Yeah. Looking at the HP as well, Kuhn lost to five units there, didn't kill a single one, so it was down to 66 HP. That's pretty rough. So Krug's around now, uh, it's going to be six Warlord. Warlord. This match sucks as he finds it. Big. And, uh, you know, I, I like Warlord. I've always been a fan of it. Um, it well, kind of feels a little bit like playing uh, Cybernetics. That's I mean, what I... From yeah, set three. I think yeah. there's critical differences is... the. One of, and this has been a critique of Warlord for a while, is it doesn't have a good backline carry. Like, mm -hmm. uh, 
like cybernetics had vein which is a very front to back type of unit and you can always stack you can stack a backline carry to help carry the fight unfortunately right. warlord doesn't have that either katarina jumps into the right cluster or she doesn't and if she doesn't then you really don't have that many then you're bound to lose that fight whereas having a backline carry could change that but with a spatula okay. you can start pivoting in like a backline gin warlord you can start yeah, looking exactly a cane to kind of so you can have Kane jump one side, Katarina jump the other side. There's a lot of options. Yeah, and you got a QSS here, and I was like, I would say QSS immediately. Yep. Yeah. And with the items are so good. Yeah, you yeah. make a, hextech yeah, now. Yeah, hextech yeah. blade, and that's perfect cat items. It's QSS plus gun blade. The third item can really be anything, but this this feels 100 like he should commit to Warlord here. And especially through the mid game, he'll sit with it. You can always transition out of Warlord, and you can go fast eight, fast nine with this, and transition to a legendary comp. But this is a really good opportunity to potentially go nine Warlord. Right. Yeah, I, I feel like every like one in twenty games, I have like a game where it's like this is the one you play Warlord, and it feels it feels like it always goes well, but you can't force it. You know, yeah. you need to have a situation like this, like we're seeing from Socks right now, where the game is really just like giving you an easy path to uh, having a good war warlord board yeah to anybody who's watching and wondering hey what what are the keys to when i should go warlord you need two conditions to be met one is you need a chosen warlord and it usually needs to be at least a two cost chosen usually so, not in italy yeah not in italy <laughs> the second thing you need is the spatula early if you don't have those two conditions fulfilled you pretty much cannot force warlord uh, it's just not strong enough to be forcible but Sox has obviously met both of those conditions. He also has the third like subcondition, which is QSS on Katarina. And this is all just a perfect spell to hit a Warlord game. This should be something he commits to. Like I said, I've never really seen him play it, though. So we'll see if this is something that he is... I'm sure he's comfortable doing it, though. It's Sox, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I think so. I think Sox was experimenting for a time uh, a little bit ago with um some some Jin Shao carries. Should I make that work with some Warlords? So I'm sure he's just comfortable enough with Warlord to go in this direction here. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to get committed to. Um, as you were saying, all the conditions are met with that third condition of already having good items on the Katarina. Generally, to win lobbies, though, you'll need a Katarina 3. Um, or I, I guess you could go with 9 as well, though. So curious yeah. to see what Sox, yeah, what Sox chooses to do here. I think Sox usually will lean towards leveling as opposed to rerolling for that, those three stars. Oh, though. Italy. She yeah, you, it. So hard to did it. Yeah, that, it's so hard to beat Six Warlord in the mid game, and Soju can't take it down. Six Warlord feels uh, very similar in power spike to Six Cultus at this point in the game. It's just a really difficult board to deal with. Yeah. I think one of the, and Warlords is always like one small patch change away from being like a really dominant trait. And I, I wonder if the 10.24 changes, which uh, include more Xin Zhao changes, is finally going to push it over the edge. Like there will be a patch in set four where warlords is like one of the dominant comps it's I think it's got it's definitely it's bound to happen and i think it might be the next one the the real thing is like if they somehow made callista a warlord i feel like that would be <laughs> that that's what sure. i would personally that's my dream because you know you get sure. a little energy as well you can make callista a warlord yeah let, let me uh, i'm you gonna have ask, the power i will slack mort dog and be like i got an idea my guy <laughs> no i mean just build a warlord spat man that is true what are the other <laughs> So one of the one of the ways one of the reasons why spat is so important to build off what you said earlier, Keen, is that you need the the belt to make the warlord spatula item, which is usually a pretty easy item to get off the carousel as well. So it's it's kind of one of those things where you can count on having that as an option in a warlord game if you get the early um, the early spatula. Of course, there's no belt on this carousel. So I know, right? And then this happens <laughs> if you get the yeah. mort dog carousel. It's gonna throw no a red swords either for hextech. Oh, it hurts! It hurts bad. You hate to see it. At this There's point, one you... sword and it got taken by Boomer and Zapper. Yeah, he probably wants to said you want it. Yeah, it takes I... a tier. That's fine. You can make a lot of stuff with that later on, even though you're not yeah. committing right now. That'll be a hand of justice on Katarina for the final item later, potentially. Yeah. 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 At this point, you just slap yeah, anything, and Sy Sykes will just slam. I'm sure he loves Chalice as well. True. So lots of options. This is where you start building towards your uh, late game mage zillion. Which, yeah. which is what he got there. Soju has the spat as well, and now has the potential to make an Elderwood spat. We generally yeah. see players not really go down the Elderwood road that much now, but if you are running Ash and you have a spat, that's one of the directions it can go, if not for a force in nature, though. Curious to see if he greeds through trying to get a fun. I like the Elderwood spat when you're playing Ash. Is Basically, you just need... If you make an Elderwood spat and you find an Ezreal, then you can get three Elderwood in, and it's really, really good in a talent-heavy lobby. Yeah. 
uh, Ash starts building armor throughout the fight, and then Talon won't jump on the Ash until the very end because of the Elderwood armor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, super, super good in that matchup there. It's going to be wild to find Ezreal, though. But the Riven's still really good as well. Just running two uh, really good four-cost carries at this point. Still has the Tom Kench yeah. in with that Sunfire. And the HP from four Brawler is just too much for most players to get through. His front line's just too strong right now. Like, uh, we were talking a little about yesterday about the chosen Brawler, Tom Kench. This yeah. is the one situation I like picking it up, is when I can build a Sunfire cape on it early. Yeah. It's probably Brawler Kench, you just don't have enough damage. But Sunfire, still very strong. If you remember at the beginning of this set, I mean, Sunfire was by far the best item to have in the early game, and yeah. Tom Kent was one of the best holders of it early. And uh, while it's not as strong as it was then, it's still a very potent uh, combination, and it's something that I like to play when I hit the Tom Kent early. Definitely. Mm -hmm. The only scenario that you can do it, if you had any other item, you know, it would be uh, very, very less incentivized. But the Tom Kench is, is super good. The damage, the inherent damage reduction that Tom Kench uh, just gives with his, with his kit there just makes him survive for so much longer to be able to, you know, guaranteed apply Sunfire to more and more units. You want good YouTube content out there? Some, some creator that's listening? Do like a Tom Kench carry game where it's like <laughs> Sunfire Cape, Ginsu's, some other tanky item, Tom Kench three. It's a brawler, like six brawler or something. That's that's some content that's being missed out on right now. That's true. Tom Kench, uh, who among us doesn't find it funny watching the little tongue slaps over and over? <laughs> High base attack damage on that tongue. It's trying. Oh, crit the gallery. <laughs> not that time, but <laughs> it's yeah. not going to be enough, though. Yeah, Aegon. give him an infinity edge. There it is. GS oh. or Giant Slayer. No, not Giant Slayer. Ginsu's infinity edge, uh, Sunfire Cape. So, so build. is running a uh, not safe for work stream. A lot of tongue on tongue action here. So, <laughs> hey, I'm not going to judge. <laughs> Whatever he's into. And it's going to be three hunters as well that he's into for now. Whatever uh, builds your board, as they say. Yeah, yeah. Very strong, strong spot to be in before the carousel. So, uh, I would expect him to potentially just roll up to seven right here, sell like the silos or so. And you'd still have 40 gold and get a chance at the chosen next turn. Yeah, looks oh, just gets a bunch of gold naturally anyway. Can sell yeah, the vein and the okay. I thought he was gonna sell the Silas over the Aphelios. If it was well, it's awkward to go five hunter could have been an option uh, for him. Good items right there. Mm -hmm. wow. another ash, another warwick. So he's sitting an ash pair warwick pair already with the another Shen hit there. I don't Ooh, think interesting. It's mm -hmm. a good it's gin. otherwise. Might be a huh. bait, I think actually. It, it I feels know. like a bait, but it still bait. seems tempting. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's the right decision. Oh. Now this is, this is <laughs> dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You go for that. Yeah. You take the yeah. He's gonna slam Ruinans right now. Yeah, for well. sure. He has that. Yep, just, there it is. Yep. yep. You love to see it. Worst case scenario, that becomes divine spat, right? And that gives Talon a little bit of tankiness. But you definitely yeah. want the EA there. Very basically what uh, Soju would might consider a perfect item because he we've been seeing him love the the Runans, so. Yeah. Ooh, we got slam jam by the set there, but he'll be uh, he'll be okay. That that four one like uh, round is always awkward because I always feel like you, you hit a lot of boards that are like halfway, you know, where they found that what they needed but they didn't get to switch everything, you know, and that's kind of where Soju is at, kind of a, a halfway halfway board. Yeah, strong enough to still sit though. So yeah, needs another enlightened. Yeah, at this point has three uh you know optimally wants a morgana does need a janna in this comp as well it's kind of unfortunate when you roll a chosen talent that it's enlightened as opposed to assassin because it's a little too awkward to run the sixth enlightened um and just have one extra there this board is a very kind of interesting pivotal kind of thing because you are running four brawlers but also running talon i think it's the good choice here it's kind of the best of both worlds eventually he's going to sell these off to uh, get the perfect uh, kind of talent comp but He's got yeah. great health, and the board is still strong, right? So this is a perfect spot to sit. You definitely got time. Things like the Sunfire Cape, too, lessen the need for the Morellos on the Morgana because you're doing that kind of, like, uh, anti-heal anyway. For sure. Mm -hmm. So he's in that, good shape. And getting jump. He's already facing somebody with a... Uh, Kiting has an early cane hit as well, so... Mm -hmm. With really great items on the ribbon, that's going to be a difficult fight for him. But... Still, he's he's still sitting in a decent spot. You might see him roll after the carousel. I don't expect to see him roll any more any more before then, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I almost think that with Soji's playstyle, he's probably just going to wait until 5-1. Uh, it depends on how hard this loss might be, though. It does get two 
assassin potential with the akali but it also is ninja so two ninjas is awkward but it's kind of fun because you're not really playing the shen and the akali for their ninja prowess you're just playing them for the right ninja. yeah i mean if he had assassin in on that fight like he was one he was about one health away from getting a reset on talon that would have killed another three four units maybe won the fight for him even so definitely i think he's thinking about that and flexing in this assassin buff here yeah well, here comes uh, Diana 3 with uh, a little bit of awkward items. Yeah, but with Uber the ramp, going to be killable for this talent at this stage in the game. No. Yeah. Boomer and so, Zap, fortunately getting a win here because you're down to 30 HP already. And oof, not pretty far either. Not a bad spot. loss for Soju, but I, I am a little bit surprised seeing him uh, on such a long loss streak after hitting that Talon. But I think it's just one of those things we mentioned where it's just it's a composition in transition right now. It's just moving from what he was using in the mid game to that enlightened comp. Yeah, Boomer and Zappers sitting at five Lissandras. He's really far off. He's already level six. It's gonna be really difficult for him to finish off his comp at this point. I think it's a really yeah. rough spot to be in, especially considering the day he's had so far. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can't get the GA, unfortunately. So what's it going to be? The rest of these items don't feel like there's nothing left that's going to feel particularly good here. You can make an assassin spatula, I guess, with a glove. Uh, and that could do some funky things in a talent composition, but uh, he's going to opt for the, the cloak, I guess, as well instead. Oh. He actually makes a bloodthirster. I think that he's thinking that he's probably going to sit and see if he naturals a chain vest. But otherwise, he says, well, worst case now, I just make a bloodthirster, which right. is not a bad final item. It uh, still counts kind of as like a defensive item for Talon. Yeah. Well, kiting is hard. Meanwhile, we'll jump on with uh, his point of view to see where he's at with that. Running the four dusk we mentioned earlier, he did hit that early cane. He could build a shroud right now, but most players would just wait until they see what the items off Raptors are. His force of nature as well, which is just really, really, really good to have at this point. Dusk is yeah. one of those that just absolutely loves having force of nature. It always feels like, oh man, there's so many units I want to flex in, and it's really difficult to get them all in. So having a force of nature kind of lets you get everything you want in. So do you actually slam the BT, I believe, because cutting scouted it out there. So I'm not choosing not to greed for that GA potential there. Just wanted the right now power spike. I mean, it's still very, very strong. You're you're never mad about those items, you know, even mm. if you would rather have a GA. Yeah, for sure. It's kind of uh, like a kind of like Shaco in set three, where it's like with the Bloodthirster on there, you're you're okay, even if like GA and Bloodthirster would be better, you know. Yeah, you you get a little um with uh the healing on the Runans. I think it actually you do get the healing on the second attack as well, so it probably feels pretty good. This is a really interesting makeup. Yeah, I think he takes this and does he have a TF in Elise still? Yeah, so at this point you can easily go into nine cultists with the extra. Force of nature as well. That means you can keep the ribbon at level, or you keep the cane as well. Or you, but it's probably just gonna be a six cultist with dusk though. Yeah. Hmm. Seems, Seems like good. Uh, in this position, you can go to level eight soon. Uh, take out maybe. What do you take out? Um, to run six cultist and four dusk here. I think that's what he's gonna want to go for. Yeah, you go yeah. eight, and what does he have in extra here? Who uh, happened? Take out the cane, I guess. I don't think you ever take Han out. You yeah. probably he probably just can't do that. Mm -hmm. Or you, or he sells the Evelyn. I don't. He might just end up not running the Evelyn and just pick it up to play this round. Yeah, mm, dropping around to Kyun and Kyun needs these wins right now. Kyun's right. really. I don't know how he dipped that low, but he's level eight with thirty gold, and you can see he has a bramble vest uh, chosen rib, or he had a bramble vest chosen ribbon. He might have sold it already, but he had a two, uh, two, a talent already with GA and IE on it, so he's feeling pretty strong. Right. Boomer and Zapper down to 13 HP, and, and uh, that would be another really rough finish for him. Um, you know, Boomer and Zapper already pretty much out of top four contention, and uh, if he finishes away, it looks like he's finished, then definitely, wow. unfortunately for him. Riven there. So what he's trying to do is play nine cultists with Kane, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Not Seems having good. No, it's really risky from this spot because you can very easily just not hit the zillion, be stuck on like eight cultists, and have to play a suboptimal board until you get to that point. Oh, oh GA for the uh, for the cane, possibly. Would you build it? Yeah, definitely GA on the cane. Really good on cane. So yeah. the cane to randomly get killed by like an ash. Right. Okay, there's Callista. That's an important one to find. Yep. Pull the ribbon again. So you just want to move items over to the cane, which makes sense. Yone, but you don't really need it in this particular comp. So he needs Atrax, Jin, and Zillion still. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's kind of awkward to run this vein, not really doing too, too much, because you have those three, uh, three Dusk right now. So could take it out for a Yone. Still running it, though. For the Yone, but maybe he's just trying to be bold on the bench. Or, But there's also a lot to consider, so it could have just been a little slow pivot. Yep. Ooh, uh, wow. Really some uh, accurate item placement there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm always a little worried he was going to put it on the Shen accidentally. Yeah, I'm <laughs> not the Shen, the always, It's just slapping on the ribbon. It just because it's always dashing. I know. I'm so scared. I'm like, I'd rather lose this round than put the <laughs> item on the wrong champion. <laughs> just it, it just done like 10 times in a row, did zero damage to that ribbon. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> watching this cave the whole time. It's so <laughs> sad to watch. <laughs> Wait, oh, no. oh. earlier had two Nikos, and it looks like they may have used the Nikos on the set, uh, both hmm. of them on the set, perhaps, because it is just. A, a set two thrown in there rather early, I would say, but Nantom is on a four win streak with the five HP, so having another pretty good game at least so far. Hey, uh, he's uh, he's tied with uh, Aegon for most points in the lobby right now too. So if he can just have you know one more good top four finish, that pretty much guarantees him to uh, go through in the top four at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Nantom's got to feel really good about the situation. Eight level eight, fifty gold. He's strong. I was like, what more can you hope for? Yeah, it's pretty much the peak there. Three shade now for kiting. Can't go four hmm. shade without that chosen, but I mean, it's still going to be pretty decent for because uh, Kane's like one of the biggest carries in this composition. Yeah, uh, this is a rough spot for Nubal. You see him sitting on level seven with no gold. Uh, Boomer and Zapper went out as well, so that's another low finish for him. Unfortunately, rough it's his day. third eighth of the day uh, yeah. for those who are counting. Oh, the Kane. Kane, is do it here, I think. can you do it? Uh, oh, killing the Warwick. Yeah, here we go. That improved targeting on the Kane hmm. right there, but with the with the recent patch, I actually allowed that win to happen. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So there's Jin. He needs an Atrax, and then he needs a Zillion, and that's it. Then he'll actually be quite strong if he can hit the nine Cultus. So little gold though to really make this work. That's the that's the rough part. He's rolling for it, but. At this point, you're just kind of crossing your fingers every time you hit that uh, reroll button. Uh, just donkey rolling for it feels so bad in this situation. Yeah, really. He needed to donkey roll for it. I feel like I think he could have just sat and then rolled again at six one. Um, yeah. I I've do never... wonder if this is a little bit too frantic. Yeah, it, it looks I've... like it. he's sitting at like top HP in the lobby right now. I don't think he needs to be donkey rolling. Exactly. Yeah, like, you I'm, can I'm spend saying... some HP. I'm not saying I would have made the right play there because I've definitely been in that situation where I end up donkey rolling when I like. I feel like it happens, and you know, in the back of your head, like you know, <laughs> this is the wrong play, and you just can't definitely. help press that roll button. Just he, he's strong. I, I don't think he needed to roll to win this fight here. Yeah. Oh man, conversing on the other side, I'm just watching mismatch Sox's HP, and Sox does actually now have nine warlords, but is still losing around to this point in the game. Uh, so mm. he teched all is up. Uh, What's his gold at? I'm going to pull up his stream on the side here. Yeah, not too sure. See, after the carousel, I suppose. But see what items people are going to uh, prioritize here. Kiyun down at 7 HP. Kiyun was running that Talon composition. One of his effort, but it got taken by Noob Owl there. Kiyun really right. thinking about what item he wants after that one. Going to go with the locket. All right. A little bit more uh, tankiness for the back line or uh, whatever yeah. he ends up running there. We're going to go to Kiyun's view right now as he does a little bit of scouting after... Making his uh, carousel selection. Yep. Scout now knows that Soju is also running Talon, knows that Kiting's running the Kane. He's very aware of everyone and uh, their matchups here. He's running the Vanguard chosen Aatrox right now, which isn't like optimal for this composition by any means, but it's going to be just a solid unit to, to play right now. It seems as though he might as actually sell it and try to roll for a another chosen here. He's, he's thinking. He's in a really weird I spot. Don't mind that actually. It's because the, the Aatrox is weird. I, I say go for it. You've got so much gold. Yeah, he's starting to roll. He could... Okay, hits Morgana too. That's good. Now you probably just sit, honestly, because even if you roll another Chosen, it's not going to like improve your comp by that much. Yeah, definitely. Is he considering frontlining Morgana to slam those items on it? Do you Maybe. slam the items, or do you bramble Yone and put like ZZ Rod on Shen here, I wonder? Or just make a tanky Shen. You can do that too. I don't want to make Shen too tanky if you want the uh, ZZ Rot to actually do something. Exactly what you said there. It was the Bramble Neone and the uh, oh, okay. ZZ Rot on the Shen. I, I do agree with that. I think it is a really good uh, delegation of those items. Yeah, it makes the most sense. I can't tell. It looks like he might... Oh, it's close. It's going to be very close. Go Ooh. Shen, go! Go ZZ Rot minion, go! Oh no, this nah. game is going to wreck him. <laughs> it's yeah, not never stop spinning. Well, uh, I think it's 5 <laughs> damage and then 2 from... 
Kane. I think he's just dead. Oh no! Oh, yeah, poor Kuhn out there. in seventh. That's that's a tragic. Well, um, I think fifty gold, which I think is the most tragic part. I just, yeah. I did a sit on fifty there. I feel like sell the HX and roll for a chosen. Like, why even sell the chosen then? Well, I mean, we you know we we did talk about that a little bit, and and his board did seem like finding another chosen at that point wouldn't have improved it that much. So you're kind of saving yeah. for maybe like level nine there. So. Yeah. I get the I get the idea anyway. I think the only thing that would have been good there is if you don't uh, find just the Morgana two naturally, but you find the chosen Morgana, then it would have been okay to do. But he found the Morgana two without the chosen, so yeah, it didn't seem to be that useful at that point. Yeah, like if you know that the chosen isn't gonna make it stronger, then you probably just hold the Atrax, right? So yeah, he wanted three adept, and I guess with the Yone and had some items move over to the Yone. It, yeah, it I think that was part of it too. Like, yeah, three depth I think was good. Yone is still like good, but yeah, you know, it, it was kind of awkward. Maybe the A trucks would have been better. I, I think I lost either way. Hard to say. Definitely. Yeah. G, G go again. Uh, New ball out in sixth place right now, and uh, Non Tom gets another win with his uh, dusk board with Kite. that. Uh, that's set two. Kite still... Kite's nine already. Sax is the uh, yeah. I'm looking at Sax's board now. Uh, he never ended up finding Gunblade for Katarina, so he ended up getting stuck on a That hurts a lot for Warlords. Yeah, yeah. no Yeah. It's, it's such Frozen a heart for non-Tom here, so that's something at least to keep him a little bit more uh, tanky anyway. Uh, I'm actually curious if we can jump on board with uh, Sox's point of view here soon to see how he's able to... Uh... Uh, come back because everyone's kind of like chilling at the top right now, besides for right. slides looking like a, a fifth place here. But he has five Katarinas right now. I'm uh, looking at his stream over there, 60 plus gold. So maybe we'll roll for the cat. Or he could level though. Yeah, we'll jump over to Sox's board and, and uh, see what he can find. He finds uh, another Katarina two. So you Ooh, know, okay, maybe yeah. he gonna find that Katarina three. Too looking long. for it. Be the difference. Oh, 40. Is... Yeah. <laughs> cat. That's a big hit too. Maybe Sox's slow APM will go to punish him here. Still has 10 seconds left, though. Rolling 23 more gold. You can do it. Roll. As well. Roll. All right, there's one more. One more. Come on, go for it. Oh, double Zillion? Yeah, but... it could have had a Zillion, too. But, uh, yeah, like... I mean, this feels bad. And with, without the Hextech Gunblade, uh, this Katarina is going to be much less effective anyway. So, debatable as far as how much that would have helped him anyway. Yeah, without the gunblade talent just kills cat basically. Yeah. So, yeah right exactly. Oh yeah. in no. Oh close. Oh, close. oh there's one health. Ah. Well, well, I, like he had one more roll. I, it's unlikely he hits it on the next roll anyway, but maybe. Yeah, a lot of few rolls actually, because could have sold uh the, the cane or the uh Katarinas to get either or, and I think it would have been enough of a power spike to justify doing it. Um, yeah. yeah. It's a tough spot to be in. Uh, you know, and and isn't it always the case like where you you get uh, you feel like you were baited by the game? You're like, oh, I thought you wanted me to play Warlords. It was so <laughs> it was such a good start for Warlords, and kind of yeah. just unlucky to not hit that hextech because he did have the rod. So all you need is one sword at that point. And he just yeah. never found it. A lot of things went right for Sox, but then a couple of things going wrong still makes the difference there. It just goes to show you how inconsistent of a comp Warlords uh, actually is. You know, get the gun, like it's a Katarina 3, and it's a totally different game where Sox could win it, but that's not It's the just very, here. very item dependent, you know? Yeah, yeah a lot it, of things dependent. It is so item dependent. It is one of the most item dependent comps in the game. Like, Kinda if like had... cybernetics. <laughs> Yeah, you don't you don't really even need the gun or the cat three if you have the gun blade, but without it, it's kind of a a doomed situation. But top four in the lobby also have very good health here. This is very we're well, gonna see a lot of them go. Yeah, oh, wow. I actually had a game yeah. the other day where four of us made it to stage seven, which I had never seen wow. before. Yeah, that's, that's pretty wild. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, that in the books for us here. Time Indeed. To depending on how these matchups do go and how many units are alive at the end their kiting is up to nine cultist here gonna jump on board with k3 soju and has five talons hmm. uh still a bit okay. away from that talent three though hey, we've we've yeah. seen people hit it yeah i mean you're gonna see him roll down basically at the last second yeah has a couple yeah. of rounds to sack in terms of hp but then if he doesn't hit there it was kind of all for naught you ever clicking and scouting boards and you accidentally mute them and then feel a little bit bad about it? You're like, oh, <laughs> hold on, I need to go back and unmute. I didn't mean to mute them. All the time, actually. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't feel bad about it, but I do do it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it happens constantly. Like, you're just scouting and you accidentally just click a little bit too far over and you're like, oh, crap, I have to go unmute this person now. 
<laughs> that's good RNG. When it's like in a cluster like that, and you somehow still attack the Jin first, I don't know if it's like consistently always going to happen like that, but definitely it feels great when it happens for the Talon player. It feels awful for the Jin player. Oh man, mm -hmm. Vanguard Riven is actually so good of a counter against this Talon here, and the six Keeper Shields that Aegon has. Yeah, I think this round may have gone over to the Riven. Yeah. But there's also Count. a Blood there, so... True. That's true. He's going to heal a lot. One more... Well, it's so close. Ooh, that last crit though. Yeah, the butters is actually a difference there. Yeah, yeah. If he had GA section there, mm -hmm. absolutely right. Hey, warlord spatula. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute, sucks. Oh, yeah. he, already had nine, he already had nine warlord as well, actually. So, I mean, hey, fit you, you just there, keep but... going, man. Hey, man, you love seeing it though. You can throw that. You can get rid of Nettle if you get another spat, you know? True. I had a, no joke, I had a crazy Force of Nature game and I had an 11 Warlord game once. Hey, <laughs> oh, with man. a bunch of spatulas and Force of Nature. <laughs> so you might see him roll here. Or does he sit? Uh, I think he sits more. He did win the last round. So, so just the kind of player to greet out into the, you know, the last second, I think, uh, to mm -hmm. guarantee better chances uh, to find either that Yone 2 or uh, Talon 3 power spike. I guess he needs Cassio 2 as well. So if you think yeah. so you're gonna, I, he's probably going to roll. I think going nine feels awkward here, but yeah. he'll probably roll after the six, seven neutral round. Agreed. But maybe he levels. You do get a lot. You get, you do get a pretty big gold spike from that point. So true. If he was planning on leveling, might have already sold these talents for econ. Uh, I guess because he probably can't go nine and also find talent three. Like it's it's possible, but it'd be a bit of a high roll. You see, nine times starting the talons as well I, I think it was really smart recognizing hey what are my threats and realizing hey if, if soju hits talon three that's gonna be uh kaput for me so totally. i feel like that's still something i don't see enough of in tournaments is people holding uh crucial units yeah, we actually ended up winning the round as well yeah we still people not do it so far and I've, we've called it out a couple times like when people get close on ribbons we've seen people skip past them when really they should be holding up yeah. yeah, I think it's something that eventually pros are going to start doing it every single game, but we yeah. still don't see it that often. Yeah. Okay, Maybe it's just me, but I almost feel like people like during the inception of TFT did that more than they do now. It's one of those things. Yeah. Like, okay, it's obvious to do, but you, now there's so many more like technical decisions that people are more focused on, and there's only so many things you can do in you know during that 30 second preparation phase. So people are starting not to do it again. It feels like. Yeah, for sure. This there's, it was definitely something in set one everybody did, but I think. Yeah. Uh, I wanted people forced uh, similar comps more often so they knew to deny more than I think there's so much flex play going on that it gets a little trickier to remember. Mm -hmm. what, I, I'm glad to see non Tom do it though. Definitely. So kiting, yeah, it looks like he did hit the Galio. So yep. eventually, nine cultists. Has yeah. had that nine cultists for a bit now. And yeah, oh man, there's the radius of it. It's so intimidating watching it slam down. A huge circle. So. It's almost as big as a gangplank alt. I'm just curious. Wow. It's actually bigger, but still. <laughs> Gameplay salt felt bigger back in the day. <laughs> just two shot the talent there. Just yeah. It's so the good. coming down. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Aegon, though. Aegon. Aegon another good uh, placement. You know, they is tied with Non Tom right now in points, but Aegon, he does fall in fourth, though. So Non Tom is going to come out on top after this game, at least for now. Still another game to go after this, though. Ultimately, Aegon's still looking like a lock for a uh, top four. So he's going to feel great going into the final game, regardless. Some good placements. Yeah. Actually, with Kieran going seventh this game as well, no one today has top four at every single game. So a bit of a, of a difference between game one and or day one and day two. Of this competition, you know, really all these players are, are going to be narrowing it down in terms of a closeness of skill level. This is a yeah. great find for Soju here. The RFC is really good on the Yone. All right, so we got a mage cap. <laughs> is not what you want going out of the <laughs> Nexus minion. All right, that's unfortunate. They they lowered the chances of getting like spatula items on on these rounds a while ago, but then when you actually do end up finding one, it's like okay, I lower it even that much harder to where I find one. It just feels so unfortunate. So do is like to roll. You just yeah. yell, Lilia, why? <laughs> you know it's her fault that you get that mage cap in there. But hey, you know you can do some fun stuff super late game with mage cap. Like once in a while, you find a way to like sneak in another mage to make it work. You know. Yeah. You really didn't see much. I only found one talent on that roll. It was like 70 gold that you rolled and only hit a single. <laughs> yeah. Player. Pretty unlucky. On one more Yone, I guess, a pair of zillions. But yeah, no, that's not going to be good enough. When you hit zillion two, putting over the Cassiopeia is definitely worth it. But you need to survive wow. here. So right now. Are we going to see a Lilia three? Look at that. There's two Lilia twos there. Oh, man. Potentially. I wonder how many on the bench. Maybe he found the chosen one. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a ghost out. right now, so we don't know. But 
Mania three has got to be something that is one of the, even among how rare five cost are. It's got to be one of the rarer five cost of three star. It's, oh, for sure. I don't even know what Lilia three does. Honestly, I've never I seen it before. Either. Probably just puts the whole board to sleep. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of damage when people get woke up. Nine sleeps or something like that. The only three star five cost I've ever hit is Lulu last set, and that was amazing to just polymorph the entire board. Yeah. I had one game where I had eight Echoes and eight Aurelian Souls with a Nico, and I wasn't sure which one to do. I think I ended up going with Aurelian Soul because I like the unit more. But I oh yeah, either. that's just way more fun. You made the right decision. I don't know, even if it didn't win, that's the right call. It was, was it definitely felt like one of those like carrier has arrived moments, you know? Yeah, yeah. I I appreciate that as an OG StarCraft person. <laughs> I, I respect that. <laughs> I was actually looking at Lilia 3 sleeps 10 targets for 8 seconds and the damage they oh. take when they come out of it is 5,000. So Lilia 3 <laughs> definitely nothing to scoff at. I mean not... all of the 3 star 5 costs are just like you win the game basically you know? Which is good. I, I want it to be that way. Yeah. You know if this was a solo queue game and Nantam was like streaming he 100% should have sold the Cassio and then rolled for Lilia to go for Lilia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for exactly. Sure. What about the content? Yeah. yeah, it's tournament time right now, though, for Nantam. And Nantam looking for another lobby win here. This game's yeah. uh, good. So sets really good into Cultist here. Oh, it comes yeah. back. oh my. Cultist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you see somebody going towards Cultist 9, uh, set is one of the big counters to it because set does more damage to anything that has uh, a lot of health. So those right. of you watching, make sure you take notes on that one. Wow. Well, there it is. Nantam uh, winning his second game in a row here, actually. One last game, won another one. He is in great shape to top four. I mean, I think he just he just does top four now, no matter what. One more game to go. But strong results from uh, Nantam. Pretty sick to see. Oh, definitely. And I mean, on Tom, the, the, the level of play has been there. You know, we're talking about in game two, a little bit of those end game misplays, but we, we know that being able to consistently do this, like Nantam is definitely a very strong player. Started the day off a little, unfortunately, with the seventh, but it's been nothing but really, really good stuff from there. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad to see that he was able to kind of rebound from a, a really tilting way to end game two. Uh, if he had played it out properly, you could have seen three straight firsts from him playing pretty different iterations of comps as well. So it was the Diana game, the second game. Uh, there's just the Riven game just now. I forget what he played in the game previous to this, but um, it's been a lot of strong play from him. So I'm excited to see him coming in strong on the day here. It's always been a very good player on the ladder. Right. Let's take a look at the scores uh, after four games. One more game to go, but after four games, we have a situation where Nantam is in first, of course. And then it does still stay pretty close, honestly. Uh, players all the way down to potentially... Uh, Sox have a chance to jump into that top four. I think, uh, you know, New Bowel has maybe, you'd have to have a lot of things go right. Uh, yeah. And uh, without doing the math, I think maybe he's got a shot, maybe he doesn't. But either way, uh, still certainly some room for some, uh, you know, pivoting as far as who takes that top four. Yeah, definitely impressive to still see Soju keep up the performance going into day three as well. Still in that top four range. If Soju has a good placement here, could maintain yeah. that. Nantam, though, the back to back first, you know, it has to be something to watch out for. Nantam is locked. Uh, we're being told for sure. Uh, everyone else still theoretically, mathematically could get uh, eliminated, but unlikely for players like Aegon and uh, Kiting is hard, of course, yeah, to uh, get. Uh, yeah. Yeah, with the good. consistency of their play, too, not a placement under fifth today. As long as they're able to keep that up, it's looking like a top four lock for them as well. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at the final composition for Nantam. Uh, what were you going to say, Keen? Sorry about that. Go ahead. I was just saying, uh, if Nantam, you're listening at all, you know, you got the lock. It's time for some six fortune action, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? I, I say, you know, Tom Kench carry. Hey, you're but, still, you're you know, still playing for more points. Fun. Every placement still does matter when it comes to uh, the, those those qualifier uh, end of end of set qualifiers and for the money as well. So you know maybe it would, it would be fun to see though for sure. And a top four placement uh, being locked for it, it, it must be a huge weight off your shoulder if you're not Tom. Yeah. So uh, as you can see, uh, yet another Mystic Chosen board winning. Sure. We're just saying, so it's pretty is good. Unique final composition though one thing so we saw the mage cap and i didn't quite catch this in game but we, we were kind of memeing it and it actually he ended up putting an ari in to give him three mage at the end so literally he gets the six sleeps yeah. off at two there yeah. and getting the double cassio all off the back i believe the cassio was the chosen unit as well yep. Uh, yep. your item actually means cassio 
it will immediately double cast onto the back line with the mage cap, which is a really huge way to start a fight. So really exciting to see this kind of composition. This is also not what you would call a cookie cutter build. You, you're not going to find this anywhere. And what people will say is, hey, this is how you play Dusk. So that's the really cool thing about Dusk is it can flex a lot of different type of units into the composition. So mm -hmm. be flexible and non-tom showing it off here with a really cool final composition. Yeah, not a lot of people would have actually made the decision to play the uh, Ari over the other Lilia, because other Lilia is like, okay, just a, a bit of a better unit, you get the sleeps guaranteed, but I think actually having three mage uh, uh, was super good there, because the Cassiopeia was positioned to double stun the Jin in the backline in that last fight, and it nearly one-shot him, put him like just one HP, and it came to, I think, eventually uh, clean them up. So I think that was a good identification from Nantom to utilize the mage bat to its full effectiveness there from getting it from that neutral round. Yeah. Yeah, Cassiopeia is a good uh, mage spatula uh, holder too because you do overlap a little bit on the stuns, but uh, getting to cast quicker, getting to do the uh, double damage essentially is is just yeah. really, really good. Yeah. Well, on that note, guys, it's time to take a quick break. But when we come back, the final game, of the Giant Slayer TV TFT Fates, uh, Fates NA Regional Qualifier. It all comes down to the very next game, so do not go anywhere. We'll see you in just a few. Do you know when the next TFT event is? I do, because I use Juked. If you're a TFT Esports fan like me, you'll love Juke because they've got everything you need to stay in the know, such as schedules, streams and live scores, pick'ems and leaderboards, and news and original content. Sign up now at juke.gg slash TFT and get everything you need to know to follow TFT Esports. Juked, your home for TFT Esports.